Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge and welcome to day four of the Geek Cupboard's festive advent countdown 2022. So here we go back with the tea advent calendar and I have high hopes for today's tea because today is a very special day because it's my birthday which is wonderful so let's hope that today's tea is something really wonderful and also let's hope the little kind of message thing on the gigantic tea door is also quite good as well. So here we go, let's open this up and let's see if we can find door number four and okay it's over here it's on the same sort of panel as where number three is down here so okay number four says read a novel okay that might be a bit of a hard push to it in one day advent calendar but okay I mean I am reading a book right now hang on is it nearby it's over there right hang on I'm just gonna lean back and get the thing I'm reading, oh crikey, he knocked something off. Um, I'm reading this at the moment. I'm reading The Lost War and it's very good. It's like a sort of, a, you know, it's a high fantasy book. It's a proper high fantasy book with, I think it's got a map in the front. I do like a book with a map. Hang on a minute. There we go. I love a book with a map. A book with a map makes me happy because you can see where you're going and where the characters are heading and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's a proper high fantasy book and there's, you know, magic and, you know, sort of, you know, intrigue and all that kind of stuff and political stuff and the characters are good. So this is really good. It's a really good book. I think... The second one, I think he's writing the second one, I'm fairly certain. I'm pretty sure that's the case. So, um, yeah, I'm reading this at the minute. I mean, I might not I might not finish it all today, Advent Calendar, but okay, I'll give it a very good go. So, um, yeah, there you go. I am reading a novel. It's just, you know, I might not be able to finish it all in one day. So let's see what today's tea is all about, shall we? Let's peel this open. Okay, so it says, okay, hang on, can we see that? Um, do good and good tea will come to you. Oh yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Ah, right. Okay. I see where we're going with this one. So at the bottom here, it gives you a little clue as to what the tea might be. And today's one says scented green tea in a bag. Okay. Let's turn it over. China jasmine. Okay. A blend of green tea and jasmine produces a light yellow infusion with a delicate jasmine scent. A very popular green tea, great for everyday drinking or as an accompaniment to Asian food. Okay, so just have it on its own, brew it for two to three minutes. Ah, okay. This, I like these little kind of recommendations. This is good because normally I just boil the kettle and pour the water in, but that seems to imply that maybe we boil the kettle and then just leave it for a bit. Just leave it to cool down just ever so slightly so the water is a little bit less than boiling and then pour the water in. Okay. Well, yeah, absolutely. I will go and do that. I will abide by the rules given to us on the back of the little kind of packet thing. So, uh, yeah, here we go. We know what we need to do. Now let's go over to the kettle. Okay, and here we are with our lovely freshly brewed cup of China jasmine tea. And I mean, yeah, you can tell it's a green tea. It looks like a green tea. It looks like a some mid-strength green tea. I left it in for the three minutes and I did follow the instructions. I boiled the kettle and then let it cool down a bit. So I didn't pour boiling water in. So hopefully that you know should be okay for the flavour of the tea and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, in terms of what it smells like, I can't really smell too much on it. I mean, possibly there's a hint of a jasmine -y sort of smell, but I don't really know 100% if I'm being completely honest what that's supposed to smell like. There is a smell of something. I just can't kind of work out exactly what it is. But yeah, whatever it is, it's not very strong. It's not a very strong smelling tea at all. But do you know what? We've smelled it and we've looked at it. Let's taste it, shall we? It might be a taste sensation. Who knows? So here we go. Let's have a little taste. Okay. It tastes like green tea. It just tastes like a green tea. I can't taste anything exceptional. I mean, that's okay. Green tea is nice. I like a green tea. It's lovely and kind of you know, refreshing and clean and cleansing and such like. I like a green tea. I do have green tea downstairs in the kitchen. I've got some and I have it you know, every so often. I don't have it all the time, but I have it every so often. But I mean, this isn't, I don't know, hang on. Maybe I just need another, maybe I need another sip. Yeah, it's it's just a nice green tea. It's just a completely ordinary green tea. I couldn't tell you if it had, um, what's the word in it, jasmine. I couldn't tell you if it had that in it or not. It's If it does, it's not very strong. It's not a strong sort of uh, taste of jasmine, whatever it's supposed to taste of. I don't really know. I mean, yeah, it's okay. It is an entirely adequate cup of green tea. I wouldn't say it's spectacular, but it's not terrible either. 
I mean, for the ones that we've had so far, I would say probably of the four T's we've had, I would put this at the bottom of the pile, I would say. Possibly, yeah, I mean, day one's T, the Petron, is definitely the best one. That set the bar very high. And then probably the one that we had on the third, which was like the breakfast tea, whatever it was called, um, the sort of, yeah, morning sunshine, whatever it was called, and then the lemongrass and ginger, and then this one, I would say. You know, it, it's not, it's not not pleasant. It's just, you know, unspectacular. It's just, you know, a regular thing, entirely adequate in all ways. So there we go. We've got some lovely, entirely adequate green tea. So let's go to today's question, which comes from Martin Tanner. And Martin says, we know you play a bit of Blood Bowl on occasion, but are there any other tabletop games that you enjoy? And there are quite a few. But um, so yeah, some people might not know what Blood Bowl is. So um, for many years from, I mean, back, this was back when I was younger, I played Blood Bowl. But then um, we got together, me and my friends got together to play a Blood Bowl tournament at our friend's house. Because he's got a house with no children in and he's got a big enough room where we can get lots of Blood Bowl boards in. So if you don't know what Blood Bowl is... Blood Bowl is a games workshop type game and it's a proper board game. So you have figures and dice and all that kind of stuff. And it's it's American football, but in kind of the Warhammer fantasy world. So you've got orcs and goblins and trolls and tree men and halflings and elves and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they play American football, but you're allowed to kind of kick lumps out of each other. So you can pick up the ball and throw it around which is generally what the elven teams do. They're quite good at that. So the elven teams are fairly nimble. So they're quite good at picking up the ball and they run quickly. So they can move down the board quickly and they can throw the ball and pass it and catch it and all that kind of stuff. But they're a little bit squishy. So if your elf does get punched in the head, it's likely your elf is going to get injured. Whereas you could have also the orc team so the orc team are fairly sturdy. They're big, strong, tough. They hit hard, don't take much damage, but they're also pretty rubbish at picking up the ball because, you know, they're not really into that kind of thing. And um, that's kind of what makes it. So you have these different teams, and they play each other and you can, you know, they can do fouling and you can get certain, certain teams have got sort of illegal things they can bring onto the pitch, like the dwarves, the dwarven team, who are very good. They're my preferred team. Um, they've got the death roller, which is like a spiky, it's like, it's essentially like a, like a lawn, like a sort of a lawn flattening thing. So like a big kind of, like a steamroller, I suppose, so like a steamroller, just a big round flat thing, but it's got spikes on it. And of course you drive that at your opponents and you run them over with the spiky bits. So yeah, they've got all these different things going on and you have the models and yeah, we get together and we play it. So I played it a long while ago. Yeah. When I was younger. And then we kind of went away from it. But then we all got back together a bit. Went, why don't we just do that Blood Bowl thing? We all used to play that. And then we have a tournament. But really, it's we do play a tournament. And that's fine. That's okay. And we have teams. And we have like little mini leagues. And we play each other. And we score points and all that. And we have a trophy at the end. But as good as that is, it's mostly just an excuse for everyone to get together and have some fun. Because, you know, we we're all doing so. We're all grown ups now. We're all old people. And we have many things to do. And some of the people, including me, have got kids and all that kind of stuff. So it's quite hard to get everybody together. So when we do, it's really good. It's really good fun. We get together and, yeah, we just, we have, yeah, there's food and drinks and tea and beer and pizza and snacks and crisps and chocolate and everything else. And we just, you know, we start, we normally, the weekend begins on, the Friday night, we go over and we just, you know, we don't play Blood Bowl on the Friday night. Just you know, go around, maybe we'll play another game, which we'll come to in a second, because I realise I've deviated from the initial question. Um, and then, yeah, let's just have a chat and maybe have a few drinks, get a takeaway or something. And then Saturday normally is the day. And then, so we play Blood Bowl. And then the evening, we just do something else, possibly. If we've got time, just play another game. And then Sunday, we'll probably meet up and have breakfast. And then we'll make our way home. So yeah, we make a whole weekend of it. But um, yeah, the question does say, apart from Blood Bowl. I'd rather have gone about Blood Bowl for a bit, but yes, yeah, so we do play that, which is a proper board game. Um, also, I mean, I suppose, does this count as a tabletop game? Um, d and I do play d and D now, which is wonderful. I found a splendid group of people that let me join in, and uh, yeah, it's, it's very good. I like d and I played it a long time ago. Third edition, I think it was, way back when, dating myself there. But um, yeah, so I played it a long time ago, and then I didn't play it for years, and then I kind of got back into it. And I play D&D again. I play a little a little rogue, a rogue tabaxi who's very rich and very snobby. And it's quite fun to play because he's relative, He's not unlikable, but he's quite pompous and aloof. But he doesn't think he is. You just think that's how he is because he's rich and spoiled. Um, but that's quite fun to play. So yeah, Dungeons and Dragons I play, which is a sort of 
tabletop game, you roll dice in it. Um, but in terms of proper like board games, I would say, um, I, I play anything really. I'm not first name. I mean, we've got a few. King Domino, that's a really fun little game. King Domino is a fun, quick game that you can pick up relatively easily. You kind of have tiles with different sort of lands on it and you have to sort of put them together a bit like dominoes and then you get points depending on how you've kind of arranged your tiles. You build your little kind of kingdom. So that's quite fun. That's a really quick, easy thing to play. You can play that in, what, 15 minutes around of that. Um, Ticket to Ride. I do like Ticket to Ride. We've got that and we've got the UK and Europe extensions, I think. Um, never played the full UK version with all the add-ons. Because Ticket to Ride on its own is great, but the map is, I mean, I say but, the map is like America. So it's got the whole map of America. And the idea of that game is you kind of create train journeys between different locations. And the longer the train journey is, you get more points. And then also in your hand of cards, you've got set journeys. So if you complete that journey from, say, one place over here to all the way down there via all these different stops, you get extra points at the end of the game. That's kind of how it works. And it's really good. It's really good. But of course, they, people don't know what's in your hand of cards. So you might be trying to create a really long route from, say, the West Coast of America to the East Coast, and somebody might ruin your plans because they're trying to do the opposite direction. And you can only put so many sort of trains on so many routes. So you might be building a long, nice train route going that way, thinking, haha, I've got this sorted. And then somebody comes along and goes, all right, I'll have that middle chunk of train route there. And you might be then going, oh, no. And then you have to kind of work your way around it, five, four of the stops or whatever. So that's quite fun. It's really good fun. You can get it on, um, you can play it on the PC as well, I think. You can get it, you can download it if you would like to. But um, yeah, that's a good thing to play. But there's a UK expansion pack which changes things and it adds technology. You have to learn technology cards and it's all quite complicated. We've never played that. Um, what else is there? I mean, ages ago, I played a game called Dead of Winter. That was good. That was like kind of zombie survival thing, but also there were traitors in your midst who wanted to do things. That was good fun. Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars is a wonderful game. That's a great game. Once you get your head around the rules, once you get your head around the rules of Terraforming Mars, because there's quite a lot, then it's really good. It's really, really good. I've played that a proper board game well, numerous times, but I do have it um, on PC and I've got it on my phone as well. And the phone, you know, the mobile version is pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty true to the board game. But yeah, that's a very good game. It, yeah, it's very in-depth. You'd have to play it. I think you'd have to play it at least once and just be confused and then just kind of get through it and go, oh, right. And as you play, other people do stuff. You go, oh, you can do that, can you? Ah, right, I see. Because there's quite a lot going on. It's like, right, you're going to earn this, you're going to earn that, that's going to do this. If you put that down, that'll do that. But also it triggers this thing. You have to kind of be aware of all these things. But yeah. Terraforming Mars is really good to play. I don't own that myself, but I've played the board game of a friend's. Um, it was it was the Bristly Man. It was the Bristly Strangers. Good old Bristly. Oh, we miss Bristly. Um, so yeah, it was his game. Um, the Firefly board game, based on the wonderful TV show Cancelled Too Soon. That was great fun to play. I've only ever played that once. We played it a long time ago. Long time ago now. But um, it was before COVID. But that was really good. It took... A very long time to play because there were, I don't know how many of us were there, probably at least six of us playing, if not possibly a few more. And it takes a while to get it done. Um, but that was good fun. That was good fun. That was quite clever. There was a lot of sort of strategy involved and trying to think about what you want to do. I think the idea of that was you had certain objectives you had to complete and you had to go and move cargo around and complete missions and jobs and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you could be like, because it, it's based on Firefly, the TV series, if you don't know what it is, uh, what that is go and watch it it's very good um you could be you could play it like a good guy and just go and complete your jobs properly and do it nicely and get reputation and people happy with you or you could go and be a bit of a scoundrel and start you know shooting people and being a bit naughty and that kind of stuff you could play it you know different ways which i quite like um and i was so close to winning i was so close to winning so we went round yeah as you do like in a clockwise way and i was ready to win and then the person to my right, so the person who was before me, took his turn. He's like, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go over here. I've completed it. And I've won. He did his thing and he won. And I was like, I'm literally the next turn, my go, I was going to take a glorious victory. But no, I was pipped to the post by one turn. But there we go. Um, what else did we play? Oh, Hero Quest. Hero Quest. So I played that 
a long time ago when I was young and then it went away and now it's come back and my friend bought the fancy kind of you know Kickstarter edition with a bajillion extra models and all that kind of stuff I have my own not fancy pants copy but it's still Hero Quest um but yeah that's really good we've been playing that as well sometimes that's what we do before the Blood Bowl just have a quick sort of a, a quick round of hero quest because the idea is you have your characters with hero quest and they accrue sort of gold and items and that kind of stuff and you keep them going through the different hero quest quests so we've been doing that so that's quite fun so yeah we've got um there's the four of us so you play the you play the different characters so there's a barbarian uh there is a wizard there's an elf and a dwarf so um yeah my friend plays one of my friends plays a barbarian and we kind of we sort we do a little minimal bit of role play, like just for for fun. So he's just charging around, going, Rah, "I'm a barbarian, I'm gonna go in." And we're like, "Don't go in that room on your own." And we just go, "I'm going in that room on my own. I'm a barbarian. I don't care." And I'm the wizard. Um, so I, I the wizard is really flimsy. The wizard's got spells, but they're very very flimsy. If they get hit, they're probably gonna take quite a lot of damage. So um, I tend to kind of hide away, and I'm a little bit more. Don't go in the room. All right, I'm running away. I'm running away. I'm gonna go and run away. <laughs> So I do a lot of running away. Um, and the elf's quite pragmatic and the dwarf just kind of comes in and just sorts everything out, <laughs> which is quite fun. So yeah, it works very well. It works very well playing Hero Quest. If you don't know what it is, give it a quick Google because it is, it's a fun game. It's a really fun game. Just, you know, dungeon exploring. You have a dungeon master and then they put monsters down and you fight the monsters with dice and that kind of stuff. That's fun. Um, I like playing little card games uh, like Star Realms. Star Realms is an excellent card game. I was going to say I'll grab a copy of Star Realms, but I think it might be downstairs. I don't think it is in the geek cupboard. My goodness me, it might be downstairs possibly. I've got a little cupboard of other games, but I think it might be down there. I'm not entirely sure, but that's really good. It's just like a little kind of, you know, a classic kind of card battler thing, um, but set in space with space themes um, and Pokemon. I play Pokemon the card game with the boy because the boy's got 12 million Pokemon cards. So we can build quite a lot of sort of uh, hands of Pokemon so you can pick your sort of deck if you like. Um, so that's quite good fun. He's got a very sort of um, fancy like Pokemon battle mat type thing. It's a really lovely sort of uh, roll up mat with a nice surface to it. So you can uh, put that down and then you just put your cards on it and the cards have effortlessly slide around as you're trying to move move the cards from like your waiting area to there or your discard pile or whatever. I quite like that. So yeah, play a bit of that. Um, I mean, I, I, I lose at that quite a bit because the boy is quite good at that. My son does play Pokemon. He hasn't played for a little while. We should do that again possibly soon. But um, yeah, he does he does beat me. And as as a parent, you sometimes do let the children win just a bit not all the time but you sometimes do go well I'll just you know let that I'll let that ball go into the goal or I won't play that thing because that'll beat you or yeah you know, that'll cause you a lot of problems so I'll just yeah I'll be generous and you kind of you know you give them a bit of a heads up because you don't want them to get grumpy or sad or not play or have a huff or have a tantrum as often happens if they lose or whatever but um with Pokemon the boy genuinely does just he he really knows what he's doing and it'll, it'll just beat me <laughs> it just goes nope there you go you've lost at one point, he got, um, just by pure fortune, by pure luck, by pure fortune, because it's a card game, he got um, a, a Tauros, a Tauros possibly, which is like a massive bull. But it was like this really impressive, it was like a fancier card, I can't remember what it was, a GX or something like that. Um, but it was like a really fancy Pokemon card. And everything I put up against this thing that he had, just, I couldn't do it. So my cards are really not very good. And he, he had this like amazing card. I was like, right, I'm going to put forward my very small rat-like creature. Here we go. Here's Rattata. And then he just, so I'd go, there you go. That's that's in play. And it go to his turn. You just go, just, you know, I'm just going to whack it. Okay, that, that's, that's that one gone. And then in Pokemon, if you take out a rival Pokemon, you get to pick from like a prize card pile. So he could get all these prizes and getting loads more cards. He get more stuff. <laughs> and he, that time he just soundly thrashed me. It was, it, it was six nil. I think it was. I didn't take any of his stuff out. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm up for any kind of board game, really. I'm not overly fussy. I will play all sorts of stuff. Not really the biggest fan of ones where you have to go and do like dares or whatever. That's a bit yeah, not so bothered about that. But yeah, most board games I will play. But there's quite a lot of tabletop games that I have played and that I've some I own, some I don't own, but I've played. But yeah, some of those are really good. I'm thinking about it now. I should go back and play some of those again. Like Terraforming Mars. Haven't played that in a long time. Maybe the um the Firefly game as well. That's quite fun. But um but yeah, 
plenty there for you to go and have a look at. But yeah, Google some of those because they are some of them are really, really good. Um, and Blood Bowl is good. I, I know I sort of started off on Blood Bowl. And the question says, are, are there other tabletop games? But Blood Bowl is very, very good fun. It's really good. It's just very silly and very anarchic. And sometimes it can work well. And sometimes because it's all dice based, you can have all the best plans in the world and the best people. But if you roll a one on a dice, you're going to be in trouble. So it's one of those, isn't it? You can't sort of predict everything. It's, you know, there is an element of an element of chance. Even though you might have the better side, you might still fall over a bit because you roll a one all the time, which often happens to me. My people tend to fall over an awful lot. I don't have the best of luck when I'm doing the whole moving about thing in Blood Bowl. But yeah, there we go. Hopefully that is enough to answer that question. That's probably quite a lot to answer that question. Much waffling on has happened. Much whiffly waffly nonsense. Hang on a minute. Because of the whiffly waffly nonsense, I need a bit more tea. There we go. Green tea is good for that look. Green tea is quite nice and sort of soothing. It's lovely. Um, yeah, I think that's it, isn't it? We've got the tea, albeit unspectacular, but you're yeah, entirely adequate and nice. And we've answered the question. So I think, yeah, we can wrap things up for now. So for the moment, thank you very much for joining me on day four of the Festive Advent Countdown 2022. And I will see you next time. Charlotte was murdered by Martin. Do we need to arrest Martin? Aaron was murdered by Martin. The mighty defense rectangle has been completed. We've crashed into a ship over there. Hello, pirates. They're just firing bits of explosive junk. It's killing quite a lot of pirates. Connor was strangled by Martin. <laughs> Somebody stop him. I'd love to stop him. <laughs>